What's going on guys? Wheels here, coming back at you with another video. And today, coming back at you with another rebuild. Today is the rebuild of the Green Bay Packers. And before you say anything, I am now sponsored by Wilson. You can uh, leave your congratulatory responses and comments uh, in that section below. But I got some people all over the course of time. Bangle. You have no personality. Bangle. Are you depressed? Bangle. Are you sad? Bangle. So today, we're coming at you with the most enthusiasm of all time. So today, we get the Green Bay Packers. It's going to be a really fun time, everyone. Wow, so we get a really great team here, guys. Well, all we have to do is press Y and refresh, and we got Aaron Rodgers in our team. And, and Ty Montgomery, wow. We got a really bunch of good players. How can it even get any better? I don't even know. This team might be already the best of all time, but if there is, you know, some place where we could make it better, I have to say, probably the cornerbacks in some parts of the defensive line. I mean, Demarius Randall and Kevin King are a fantastic cornerback pair, but I'm thinking that maybe, uh, Quentin Dial and our man here, is this Dean? Dean Lowry. They could be upgraded a little bit. And then the offense side of the ball, maybe that right side of that offensive line, maybe Lane Taylor could go a little bit, uh, <laughs> Alright, for real, we're back. I have been drained of all emotion. That was my emotion for the week. And we're back to Stone Cold Serial Killer Bangle. I'm dead inside. Alright, so, um, if you guys are new around here, these fantasy style rebuilds, basically what the deal is, is we can do anything possible in order to get the team back on the right track, because, uh, in Madden franchise mode, simulation is kind of weird, and the problem is, no matter how good of a team you have, that would easily be able to compete at any level, unless it's a super team, it generally will not do all that well. You'll see a lot of inconsistency, so basically anything goes. First trade is Lane Taylor, a third next year, and a sixth this year. For the first round pick from the Buccaneers, they usually do pretty poorly in simulation. They're not a fantastic team, but the Packers are in a really interesting situation and scenario where Aaron Rodgers is pretty much their complete team, and the rest sucks for the most part so we kind of have a lot of work to do and um with guys like jordy nelson who are 32 years old even though they're fantastic receiving options we're probably going to have to trade them because regression starts at age 30 in madden or 29 28 kind of around then so jordy nelson's going to be like an 86 overall in two years and the reality is that's just probably not good enough to compete when we're going to have a shot at the super bowl uh, if that happens so jordy nelson probably going to be next to go with this trade, I am trading Jordan Nelson, Quentin Rollins, and Joe Thomas for a first and a second this year and a third next year. I think it's pretty good value. Again, with the regression system in Madden, Jordan Nelson just is never going to be higher than a 90, and he's going to go down substantially over the next couple of years. So even though I think he's amazing, had to trade him, had to be done. Also, this headband is oddly comfortable, the sweatband, so I don't really want to take it off no matter how much of a little uh, fruitcake I look like, but... We're going to roll with it. It's, it. It is what it is. With this trade, I'm trading Clay Matthews, Morgan Burnett, and a first for Ezekiel Elliott and a third. Reasoning on this trade is Clay Matthews, another older player. Regression's going to hit very hard, so even though Clay Matthews is like the biggest staple of the Packers next to Aaron Rodgers over the past decade. And I know Brett Favre was in there kind of as well, but we're thinking more towards recent times. Clay Matthews was such a beast. Um, for the sake of the video, we're going to have to trade him. And then Morgan Burnett... Uh, I have a very interesting plan at the safety position, and it requires Morgan Burnett not being on the team. First round pick was just, you know, value to get Ezekiel Elliott. And the third inning is great value, so we have a true number one running back now. Not to say that Ty Montgomery hasn't been very good, but maybe we move him to wide receiver now that we don't have Jordy Nelson. He has quick development, he is extremely valuable. Just, I think he would serve better as a wide receiver on this team more than a halfback. So his overall goes to a 76, which I think is a decent um, number in the slot. We'll get his route running up, get his catching up. He's going to be a very good option for us. Better than Geronimo Allison. Geronimo. Did I say Geronimo? Geronimo Stilton. Look that one up. Also, if you guys are just watching this video, I'd appreciate subscribing to my channel. I'm almost up to 50,000 subscribers, and I have many hundreds of headband, sweatband free videos which maybe your thing is the sweatband, maybe that's a fetish or whatever. Not not usually for me, but 
I think we're going to leave the team as is for now. Um, I know Richard Rodgers is going to be a free agent. I'll probably look to re-sign him. Actually, no, I'm not done yet. Um, interesting situation at running back. I'm going to be trading Jamal Williams. I want Aaron Jones to be the backup. He's a very good option. I want to trade Brett Hundley, but I'm not sure if I'm going to right now. I think I'm going to hold on to him for the season. And I think I should trade Richard Rodgers, and I'll hold on to Lance Kendricks, and then address the tight end position either in free agency or the draft. So, Randall Cobb's another guy who I'm not exactly sure what to do with him. With this trade, I'm trading Jamal Williams, Aaron Ripkowski. I don't really need a fullback. And a third round pick for Demarcus Lawrence of the Cowboys having a very, very good season. He's going to help our pass rush on the other side. And I really got to decide what kind of defense I want to run because obviously, uh, well, I guess maybe not obviously, but this is a 3-4 personnel with Mike Daniels at right end and Kenny Clark at the basically the nose tackle position. And now Demarcus Lawrence is a 4-3 defensive end, so he doesn't necessarily fit the system. But what I'd like to do is probably move in Mike Daniels to defensive tackle, run a 4-3, move Nick Perry down to right end, and then, you know, Blake Martinez has been crazy good this year. And I think, well, what my plan was was to have Demarius Randall play safety, but he doesn't exactly have the zone coverage for that. I think I'm going to do it anyway. He's going to play free safety like he did at Arizona State. He was fantastic at that. I think he could have been so good at free safety, but he was transitioned into a cornerback. Josh Jones was a cool player, but Ha Ha Clinton Dix is going to move over to strong safety. I think he fits better as a strong safety, although every time I've traded for him, despite his young age and developing all that, he never develops into anything, so I'm hoping that can change for this one. Also, my Twitter is down in the description below. Please follow me on there. Uh, I don't really have a reason other than that I want for it to happen. Also, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but all the links are in the description. A lot of self-advertisement, but uh, no one else is going to advertise for me, so I figure, why not? Changed every position around. Now I'm just looking to unload Lance Kendricks, and we should be golden. Broncos? What can I get from the Broncos? With this trade, I'm trading Lance Kendricks and a fourth for a first-rounder from the Broncos, and I think I am just about done now is the team that we are going to be using. I think it's pretty good across the board. However, offensive line is a bit of a concern as Brian Bulaga isn't the player that he once was. We're sticking it out with Richard Rodgers. I think the offense is the bright spot of this team. I'll probably sign a fullback. This is the way the offense is, or excuse me, the defense is going to look. It is a 4-3 setup. Nick Perry has moved to right end. Mike Daniels to defensive tackle. Of course, we now have Demarcus Lawrence. Mike Daniels overall stayed the same. Demarius Randall, or Demarius, however you want to say it, Moved to free safety, where he is also a 75 overall. Clinton Dix, Hashan, to strong safety, where he's an 81 overall still. And then our cornerbacks are horrific. Kevin King, first round pick. And then Devon House, can't believe he's still even in the NFL. And then uh, it's kind of the same thing about Ahmad Brooks at left outside linebacker. It's a decent team. I'm going to simulate to the midseason mark and see how we're doing. All right, 1-6 and six at the midseason mark. Could be better. I didn't sign a fullback. That's probably what it was. All right, we're going to go ahead and sign this guy, CJ Ham. Looks like he's viewing sub bots, but I don't know. Well, we're going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and sign him to the team. Free agents are Demarcus Lawrence, Devontae Adams, and Richard Rodgers. And I guess Corey Lindsley is notable as well. Don't really want Richard Rodgers back. Probably should have traded him. So, Corey Lindsley, he does have quick development. He's also terrible. I'll probably re-sign him anyway. So Demarcus Lawrence, Devonta Adams, and Corey Lindsley all have returned. Now, with the 1-6 record, I know it looks bad because it is. Here's the deal, right? Here is the deal. Usually, and if you guys have watched many rebuilds, you know this, a guy like Aaron Rodgers will win an MVP, but the Packers will go like 7-9. and nine. You know, nothing too good, obviously. You know, you'll see 6-9-1, and one, and then... Aaron Rodgers wins MVP. So this is a team that doesn't perform well in simulation. So I figured, why not build it down instead of, you know, barely making the playoffs? Just build it, like, de-build it, you know, whatever you want to say, and um, come back firing stronger next year. So that's basically what's going on here, even though I don't have my first-round pick anymore. I traded it, thinking that I'd do better. I don't. I can't explain myself out of this one, to be fair. Vikings 8-0. All right. All right, so we missed the playoffs. Went 6-10. and 10. We'll see the stats, see how that happened. Aaron Rodgers, 3,900 yards, 29 touchdowns, 15 picks. 
Not a great season. 1,300 yards pretty much on the ground for Ezekiel Elliott. Five touchdowns. Aaron Jones had 11 touchdowns, that is. Receiving, Devontae Adams, great season. 93 catches, 1,300 yards, eight touchdowns. Nine touchdowns for Ty Montgomery in the slot. That is awesome. Blocking. Did all right in that department in terms of not letting up that many sacks. As Jake Ryan leads our team and not Blake Martinez in tackles with 139. Tackles for loss is 20 and 19 from Mike Daniels and Kenny Clark. Great work on the D-line. Sacks, 14 from Nick Perry. 12 and a half from Kenny Clark. 9 and a half from Demarcus Lawrence. This is a great defensive line. Not a ton of interceptions, though, if I'm being honest. That is, what, five as a team? Not great. Force fumbles, four for Mike Daniels on the team. Fumble recoveries, two from Blake Martinez. Safety for Mike Daniels. And any defensive touchdowns? No. Let's check out awards. I don't think we'll have anyone with anything. It's Drew Brees wins MVP of the 12 and 4 New Orleans Saints. Tom Brady in there. Look at Jameis Winston. They did better than they usually do. Uh, we are. What team am I even doing? Packers. Okay. <laughs> NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, nowhere to be found. Defense Player of the Year, Brandon Graham. No Packers to be found. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Dalvin Cook. See Aaron Jones at number six. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Reuben Foster of the 49ers. There's Kevin King at number six. Looks like Devontae Adams made a Pro Bowl, so that is 42,000 XP. Uh, and Superstar Development. I have never seen Superstar Development awarded before. But there you go. It is possible. So that is actually pretty cool to see. Looks like Kenny Clark. Is that is that a Pro Bowl as well? That is a Pro Bowl. All right. Jarvis Landry is a free agent, and the Redskins are trying to pay him. Where are the Dolphins? They're nowhere to be found. Giants going after Drew Brees. What do we need here? Ladarius Green could be nice, but he is 28. I could easily get him. Trey Burton could play fullback. I don't really want Trey Burton. Rashawn Melvin, probably not. Dante Moncrief. I think I'm going to make an offer on Jarvis Landry. It is not often at all that you'll see a player of his caliber in free agency. I think we're going to make him a very large deal. Or should I say a very large offer? I'm willing to pay him a cap hit of no more than 8.5 mil. Although that is a monster deal. We got to outbid the, uh, the Redskins. 116 points. Uh, geez, I'm not... I'm not offering more than that. So if we get him, we get him. The Redskins are offering him like 10 mil a year, and I'm just not willing to do that. However, Jarvis Landry chooses Green Bay over Washington and now gets to play with Aaron Rodgers. Thank you for making the best decision. And this gives us more leeway to potentially move on from 28-year-old Randall Cobb, get Ty Montgomery in the slot, who I probably should have had returning kicks. Ah, I did this poorly. I should have had my third down running back be Aaron Jones, so he had more opportunities to get points. And uh, we get upgraded as a backup. He's so young. And then I should have had Ty Montgomery returning kicks. Mistakes were made. Not, not really, but kind of. Here we are in the draft. We have the 16th and 18th selections, as well as the 28th, I suppose, in the first round. So we do have some picks. Don't know what's going to be available at the time of our first pick, but you guys will see when we make them. Now, with my first pick, we're going to be taking Walker Bell, a corner out of Wisconsin. I think it'd be a whole lot more fun if we could call him Walker, Texas Ranger. But we'll, we'll get to that maybe after the draft. But 6-2 out of Wisconsin. Really good top three skills. Not amazing, but I think right where you kind of want him to be. Decently fast. Here he is, Walker Bell, 78 overall. It's a reach. Mm, that's like one of the worst reaches I've had in a while. Uh, not a bad player. He's already the best cornerback we have on our team. I don't know. He doesn't, he doesn't look all that bad. It's just man and zone aren't that high. I know every time I take a player that isn't amazing, everyone's like, oh, you try to justify it. But I'm like, ah, he doesn't look all that bad, I gotta say. Next up, we're going to be taking Nash Foot out of Wisconsin again. Back-to-back -back Wisco picks. Six foot seven. Great skills. Great combine. You imagine four six six feet is six feet seven inches tall. Slow development, you fucking ass. Mm, he's not bad though. He's just, uh, just a piece of shit. Fuck Wisconsin, honestly. It's a piece of shit state anyway. Just realized that I probably shouldn't be talking shit about Wisconsin. 
when I'm doing a Packers rebuild and Green Bay is in Wisconsin. And it's just, we're bringing in these local pieces of shit. Probably t should have taken a good old Alabama Auburn boy and Riley Sendline. I don't know. With this trade, I'm trading the 28th overall pick and a second pick number 40 and a seventh rounder next year for a one and a two next year from the Browns and Joel Batonio. So that helps us out on the offensive line a lot. And uh, let's go ahead and, and move on through this draft as I'm not really sure where I want to go. I don't have a, don't kind of have an outline the way I usually might. With this pick, I'm going Franklin Cockerham out of Maine. Here he is. That's a pick to make up for this kind of trashy draft class thus far. Franklin Cockerham, Cockerham out of Maine. 79 overall, quick development. And uh, I just realized my face cam should probably be on the left side. Uh, but yeah, quick development is great as we're going <laughs> to go ahead and migrate across the screen here. And... Um, yeah, 94 speed's great. This is a really good player. I still don't really think he's as good as the 78 overall cornerback we drafted earlier. I mean, he's just not as well-rounded. He has way more potential, especially with quick development. That's a great cornerback to get to pair with Kevin King and the other corner. And now I'm going to take Jamarquise Washington out of Montana, a 21-year-old defensive tackle. Put up 42 reps of 225. He's decently fast. B-plus power moves. I think this player is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous potential with as strong as he is, with as good as his power move is. It's going to be a third-string defensive tackle, but as Mike Daniels continues to get older, perhaps Jamarquise Washington is a player that sees more time, depending on how good he is. And he's going to be an 80 overall with quick development. He's ranked number 10 in the class. We take him at 72. How the tables have turned. I was hoping power moves would be like 88. 94 strength. 76 tackles, 79 blocks, at 86 power move, 80 excel with 75 speed. Quick development, um, really, really good pick here. And with that development, starts to make you wonder, is Mike Daniels potentially in the long-term future of this team? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Trading this pick down for a three next year with the Browns, that is easy. I will do that anytime. Anytime you're not sure, I know it's kind of boring, but trade down. Get your, tr get your picks. You can do more with them next season. It's always more valuable to trade down. Trade down, trade down, trade down. With this pick, though, I'm taking another cornerback, Carrington Briggs out of Wake Forest. I'm willing to take a chance on a player like this to be maybe my fourth corner. Got to be better than Devon House. Um, we pretty much picked him right around where he's supposed to be. 88 speed, 85 man is ridiculous. Uh, but really low play to X, so that overall is pretty low. You know, um, with that speed, you can't really do too much with this guy because 88 speed just isn't all that good. But as a fourth cornerback, he's extremely solid. Just never a guy that's going to be on the forefront of this roster. This guy, Linval Keel out of Vanderbilt, another 21-year-old. He's supposed to go in the seventh round. We don't necessarily need a strong safety, but we don't also not need one. And... He looks really, really good in terms of combine. Crazy fast, strong, quick, agile. We're going with him. Excellent pick. 91 speed, 86 hit power, 76 zone, 76 tackle. I would hope for like quick development. That'd be awesome. But he's actually a really, really good player. This was a really interesting draft class. We'll have to see how season number two goes with a bunch of these new players in place. This trade, I'm trading Randall Cobb, Brett Hundley and a third round pick for CJ Mosley. The reason I am trading Randall Cobb is because we don't necessarily need him anymore and his upgrade packages are far too expensive. So to upgrade route running is 3,000 points. I'd rather easily spend the upgrade points on Ty Montgomery who can play, also has quick development and his packages are far less expensive due to age and, and things of that nature. Super young player. So we're sticking with Ty Montgomery in the slot. I think that's the best move for the long term. This is the team starting some rookies out there. Going to have to see how Mike Daniels does because he is 29 now. And as you can see, regression is starting to hit because getting older and also being shitty with the Packers. It's a decent team. We could obviously upgrade a right outside linebacker. But we're going to stick with the way it is for right now. Starting a bunch of young cornerbacks. Defensive line looks awesome. Would really like to get Jamarquise Washington involved. Just not exactly sure how I can do that. 
I don't really see it as feasible unless I were to move to a 3-4 and then play Demarcus Lawrence at outside linebacker, Nick Perry at outside linebacker, Kenny Clark at nose tackle, Mike Daniels at end, and then Jamarquez Washington at end. Move CJ Mosley to outside linebacker. That's what I was planning on doing. That's why I traded for him. Maybe I want to try a 3-4 personnel. I've just talked myself into it. With this trade, I'm trading Jake Ryan, Brian Balaga, and a second round pick next year for Jamal Adams. Now, the thing with Jamal Adams is that he plays safety and not offensive line, and I kind of need offensive line. But at the same time, Jamal Adams is really good. So if I could move Jamal Adams over to free safety, ditch Demarius Randall, because he's kind of trash, to be fair, to him, which I guess that's not fair to him, but it's the reality. If I could get an offensive lineman like David DeCastro, that would be wonderful. Please go through. Oh, baby, we got David DeCastro. That's a fact. We don't even have him yet, and I already have him. Fifth round pick added to the mix. Demarius Randall, a fifth round pick for David DeCastro. And this offensive line is uh, moving on up like the Jeffersons. I'm making ridiculous references, but I think this is going to be the team. Overall, looks pretty good. Jason Spriggs is our new starting right tackle. Interesting. Got a bunch of rookies out there, and I'm ready to simulate. It's a good situation. This is a good team. Move to a 3-4. We got Jamarquis Washington now starting at left end. He's a 75 now instead of an 80. I don't really care. We're doing it. See you guys at the midseason mark. All right, so we're now 5-2 at the midseason mark. Doing quite well. Currently at the top of the division. Looks like CJ Mosley is a free agent. Who else is here? We have Haha -Ha Clinton Dix, who I could definitely re sign. Ty Montgomery, who I definitely will re sign. Haha -Ha Clinton Dix is an interesting one because I thought about trading him for, for a. Uh, oh, I didn't even change positions. Did I? Oh, I don't think I did. So I re signed all those three guys that I mentioned. However, I'm not sure that I changed Jamal Adams to. Or Ha Clinton Dix to... Ah, boy. All right, Jamal Adams has to go over to play free safety. That needs to happen next because, uh... Well, okay. We're in, a, we're in a really interesting position with some of my draft picks. Because it looks like my man over here, uh, Keel, had a decent amount of XP from doing whatever he did. I don't, I don't know what he does, but he did some stuff. And he really isn't bad. It's like, if we could upgrade him into being a good player... Where are we looking at then? Because he already has an interception. He's having a decent season. He's up to a 75 overall now. He'll probably just end up being trade bait. But that's a really, really interesting player. And if HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix doesn't develop, I mean, we might have our answer at safety in that drafted um, player, Keel. Why is Benjamin Watson on the team? No. Why does he have quick... He's 37. No, get out of here. Who signed Benjamin Watson? I don't want Ben Watson on the team, not even at all. I'm also not going to upgrade anyone because I uh, don't want to. Do some scouting. I will see you guys for the playoffs. We are 11-5 and five and have made the playoffs. The Vikings also went 11-5. and five. However, uh, we still have a wild card matchup because we didn't do well enough. Looks like Devontae Adams made a Pro Bowl. Again, he has a ton of XP every year. Ben Why is Ben Watson back on the team? Get out of here. Stop. I have the setting off. I don't know how they keep signing Ben Watson. I would, I want foot. Words. Okay. Let's go ahead and see the stats. I need to hit, hit that player to do well. So he would get not slow development anymore. But Benjamin Watson, I guess 37 year old Ben Watson was the answer. Aaron Rodgers, kind of a shitty season. Might have to uh, mess around with the playbook and the scheme and things. Because this is not Aaron Rodgers. I mean, a lot of yards, but not Aaron Rodgers, Lovers of Touchdown or anything like that. Ezekiel Elliott went off, 1,600 yards, 12 touchdowns, 13 touchdowns for Aaron Jones, receiving Devontae Adams. What a crazy season. 105 catches, 1,537 yards, 9 touchdowns. Ty Montgomery, 9 touchdowns as well in the slot. Juice had a decent season. Blocking, pretty good from the offensive line as Blake Martinez led our team in tackles with 122. Tackles for loss, 20 from Kenny Clark, 16 from Mike Daniels. Quarterback sacks, 11 for Mike Daniels, 7.5 for Nick Perry, 6.5 for DeMarcus Lawrence. A lot of players picking up sacks. Interceptions, 3 from Franklin Cockerham, 
Three from Kevin King, two from Clinton Dix. Forced fumbles, we have three from Mike Daniels and Jamal Adams on the team. Fumble recoveries, two from Jamal Adams. Any defensive touchdowns? No. All right. How'd we do in terms of awards? Anyone? Leonard Fournette wins MVP with Blake Bortles. Robbie Bortles at number two. Any Packers? No. NFC Offense Player of the Year goes to Matthew Stafford. No Packers. No, actually, Ezekiel Elliott at number 10. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Aaron Donald. Two Seahawks in there. Two Eagles in there. Interesting the way that worked out. No Packers. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Morgan LaRocque for the uh, for the Saints. As uh, Nash Foot in there at number 7 behind Ben Watson. Probably would have been higher. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Leandre McIntyre. As Franklin Cockerham comes in at number two. I say his name differently every time. Walker, Texas Ranger at number four. And um, looks at Lynn Valkeel and Jamarquise Washington at eight and nine. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of this XP. 45K for Jamal Adams, who almost certainly made the Pro Bowl with those numbers. He did. Love it. This is the upgraded team. I think it looks pretty good. Obviously, there are areas that we could improve. A tight end. Maybe we should sign, you know, some random 37-year-old tight end. That could work out pretty nicely. But a lot of upgrades have been made. Chaborkis Washington back to an 80. Jamal Adams at a 96. Cockerham at an 85. We have the Rams in the wildcard playoff. Can we advance to the divisional? I think that we have. That's what praying gets you. Decent, decent work uh, from the Packers as it looks like we could move on to the conference championship with a win over the Carolina Panthers. However, we got to go to Carolina. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality. But we beat them to advance to the conference championship where we have to play at Seattle against the 13-3 and Seahawks to advance to the Super Bowl. Everything on the line to make the Super Bowl in year number two. We're going to do more years after this, even if we win the Super Bowl. Provided we make it, and we do. The 11 and 5 Packers have to face the powerhouse that is Robbie Blake Bortles. Unbelievable. We need Smoke and Jay on the team. And the fucking CPU once again signs Ben Watson. All right, Ben Watson it is. He's going to stay. Um, wow, that was great. That was a great use of XP there as Ben Watson stays at an 82 overall. I don't know, well, I don't know. Ben Watson, he's a, he's a part of the team now. That's just where we are. But Super Bowl Minneapolis in Minnesota facing the 93 overall Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's get into it. Out to an early lead, but Jacksonville answers. Down by one after a field goal. We have a 13 well now 17 to 13 uh deficit to the jacksonville jaguars so we're starting to pour it on here but this game is far from over 27 to 19 need to get back in this quickly as it is slipping away and it will slip away entirely as 37 to 19 is your final score here in minnesota as the jacksonville jaguars have beaten aaron Rodgers in the super bowl and that's a familiar sight unfortunately as uh, I am a huge Aaron Rodgers fan, but we can't deliver a Super Bowl as the powerhouse Jaguars have beaten us. Aaron Rodgers was outdueled by fucking Blake Portals. Oh my goodness. Okay. Year three will be different. Um, and maybe we don't even make the Super Bowl, but I think, I think we're going to have a better team. We're going to have a better chance to compete. We need that defense to match what the offense is bringing to the table. And, uh, and then I think for sure we're going to be able to come down and win a Super Bowl. Looks like Jadavian Clowney is actually a free agent. He's an interesting guy to go take a look at. Very interesting indeed because we could play him at right outside linebacker. With an aging Nick Perry, Jadavian Clowney would slide in really nicely at right outside linebacker. Uh, and kind of did uh, do what he did at South Carolina, although he was pretty much hand in the dirt for three end. But as an outside linebacker, Davian Clowney obviously has no lack of athleticism. I'm definitely going to make him an offer. I, I actually really want Davian Clowney. He's a missing piece. He may be one of the missing pieces, uh, but he's certainly a good start. Clowney would be incredible to get. 
Let's see if we sign him. Fuck you, Genavion. Really? You clownvis? I, kn I knew it. Clownvis shirts. Link in description. More self-advertisement. Um, as Nick Perry continues to kind of stay right where he is. Getting older. Nice. Getting really shitty is what you're getting. Clowning would have been so nice, but uh, of course not. Of course not. All right. NFL draft time. We have the sixth overall pick. We also should have the 31st overall pick, if I, if I recall. And we do. All right, let's go ahead and simulate to the number six overall pick. See what we're doing. Might have to go after a tight end because uh, I swear to God, if Ben Watson is on this team, I might kill somebody. With this trade, I'm trading the sixth overall pick, Dean Lowry, and a second rounder for Leandre McIntyre. We saw him win Rookie of the Year, and now I want him on my team to play outside linebacker. Nick Perry, I think, has got to go. Just I'm not really in on the whole regression thing. It's not really a big favorite fan of mine what with this pick i'm going a cornerback bernard justin out of notre dame great top three skills doesn't matter if he's not athletic well i mean he's an athlete obviously but 88 speed isn't anything crazy but 80 overall on bernard justin out of notre dame gonna be a really solid cornerback and now i think if i can make a move to trade nick perry if i can trade um Kevin King, I think we should be able to get a lot of value in return for them, and I'm not exactly sure what position I would be going after, but um, I think we're set at safety. I think I might be going after a better cornerback. I don't even know. I think we're fine on the defensive line. Maybe offensive line? Certainly an option. Right tackle could be something we, we pursue. Maybe tight end. Maybe we go after an elite tight end. Eric Ebron's pretty good in the game. 90 overall. It's going to be Kevin King and a second round pick in order to get him. I think that's more than fair for a 90 overall tight end. And uh, the offense looks really, really good. I think now we need the emergence of a star cornerback. We have three solid ones. But if I could trade Walker, Texas Ranger for uh, a better cornerback, like you look at a guy potentially like Darius Slay, if we could get him on the team. Uh, if I could figure out a way to do this, would, this would actually be awesome. Maybe we're not going to do it right now. We're going to maybe do something uh, at the start of next season. But that's definitely a position we could obviously improve. But uh, let's let's finish out this draft. Turning this third rounder into a second rounder. I'll take it from the Browns. Got to. In case you guys were curious, Leandre McIntyre is absolutely ridiculous. He should be really, really good at a right outside linebacker. And uh, Nick Perry can go. We have some options in terms of trading safeties, but we need a stud corner. That's, I think, the biggest issue on this team is the secondary just isn't that good. And it's been the issue of the Packers in real life as well. They just don't have the cornerbacks. And even though these look like some solid corners, if we could trade for an elite one and upgrade over Walker, Texas Ranger, I think that'd be awesome. With this trade, I am trading... Walker Bell, Nick Perry, and a first for Tredavious White of the Buffalo Bills. Extremely young cornerback playing at an extremely high level. He has been awesome. Defensive Rookie of the Year candidate for sure in real life. And that is the elite cornerback that we were looking for. And now the secondary looks, I think, much better. And if I could trade Vince Beagle or Ky uh, Kyler Fackrell or uh, Keel, whatever his name is, or Josh Jones... We could get a really good safety to upgrade over Haha ha Clinton Dix, which I think would probably for the, be for the best. Maybe I'd go after a tight end. I'm not sure this... Or excuse me, or excuse me, I meant right tackle. I don't know. It's either right tackle or safety. I mean, I think I'm going to stick with Haha ha Clinton Dix. And Jason Spriggs isn't bad. We're going to stick with the team that we have now, actually. I think that's probably the best move. At the midseason mark, we are only 4-3. and three. Not great. Not great at all. But we are winning the division, which is something that we can take out of that that's positive. Aaron Rodgers is an impending free agent, as is Zeke, as is Kenny Clark, Mike Daniels, Blake Martinez, and Jason Spriggs. Also, Justin Vogel at punter could be a necessary return. Um, I think we're going to try to get all those guys back. I don't know why I said I don't want Jason Spriggs. But Mike Daniels and Blake Martinez are not uh, signing yet. Blake Martinez wants more money in general, and Mike Daniels hates everything. I offered him a one-year deal because I really don't know what the future holds for Mike Daniels, who was a 93 overall and is now down to a 90. 
and um, I don't know what the future holds for him. I can't trade him. The trade deadline has passed. I think I'm going to go ahead and upgrade our players and then hopefully go to the playoffs. So I will see you guys there. So we have made the playoffs with a first round bye. Boom. We went 13 and 3. All right. Uh, really turned it around as we won out. That is very nice stats. Aaron Rodgers. That's what I'm talking about. 5,252 yards, 48 touchdowns, and 12 interceptions. That is a season. Rushing Le'Veon. Levy Ezekiel Elliott. What is good? I just I had a stroke just now. 1,415 yards and 14 touchdowns for Zeke Aaron Jones. Had double-digit touchdowns as well. Receiving three 1,000-yard receivers. Ty Montgomery had 17 touchdowns. Eric Ebron had 14 touchdowns. As Devontae Adams had 1,000 yards, 1,200 for Ty Montgomery, 1,200 for Jarvis Landry. What is going on with those numbers? Zeke had four touchdowns. That is ridiculous. Blocking, Jason Spriggs lit up a whole ton of sacks, comparatively to the rest of us or the rest of the team. Blake Martinez led the team in tackles with 137. Tackles for loss would be 16 from Kenny Clark, 12 from Mike Daniels. Quarterback sacks, 14 and a half from Demarcus Lawrence. Jim Marquise Washington with 8.5, 8 for Mike Daniels, and 8 for Leandre McIntyre. Interceptions, 4 for Clinton Dix, 3 for Jamal Adams. Bernard Justin, the rookie out of Van, or should be Notre Dame. Trenavis White and Josh Jones all had 3. Josh Jones? How did Josh Jones have 3? Do we have a backup strong safety that's getting a lot of time? All right. I'll be damned. One defensive touchdown for Hawk, Clinton Dix. I forgot about Forrest Fumbles as rookie Bernard Justin leads. So does Blake Martinez and Leandre McIntyre. All with three. Two recoveries for Blake Martinez. This is a team that's playing really, really well. We are first in offensive yards. As Aaron Rodgers takes home the MVP. Where's Zeke? Don't see any Zeke in there. NFC Offense Player of the Year, Aaron Rodgers. I love to see it. Zeke in there at number eight. Defensive Player of the Year, Brandon Graham as Blake Martinez finishes in second to Marcus Lawrence, fourth. Show me Offensive Rookie of the Year. No. Did we even draft someone? I'm not sure, but show me Defensive, for sure. No, Kevin Miller. Bernard Justin finishes sixth. He had a really good season. I'm surprised it's not higher. Like, first. Let's see who we have in the Divisional, though. Back-to-back -back Super Bowl appearances, I think, for sure. The 13-3 and three Falcons. All right. That's going to be tough. But we do have some XP to spend. Ty Montgomery has 23K. Is that a Pro Bowl? It is. Any one wide receiver of the year. I would hope so with 17 touchdown catches. <laughs> Jesus. Defensively, who went off here? No one. There. This is the smallest amount of XP I have ever seen for a group. That's actually ridiculous. Why is it so low? The fullback that we signed, Daniel Boozing, who I didn't even show, quick development. And 21k XP for making the Pro Bowl. He's going to be pretty good. The team has been upgraded. It is looking, again, even better than it did previously. As Corey Lindsley and Jason Spriggs are actually coming along. Ha ha Clinton Dix. He never really does all that well in these. It is what it is, though. We have a number of other players that are performing really well. However, Jamarquise Washington, I mean, he's just not getting the XP, which makes, makes no sense. He had like, like 3,000 for the entire year. But can we advance the conference championship by beating the Atlanta Falcons at Lambeau? Surely. The Falcons beat the Packers at home. Of course they do. Season 3, not all that successful in comparison to last year's Super Bowl berth. But Season 4, the final season, will be the season. Blake Martinez has got to come back. He's a 91 overall. I need him. Mike Daniels is an 89. Uh, I, I can do better than Mike Daniels. I'm not going to re-sign him. All right, Blake Martinez returns. Jason Spriggs. Uh, we're going to offer him a deal. I probably could do better. If we're going to do five years to get him until he's 31. And I think I'm fine. I'm going to go out and I'm going to get a better kicker, better punter. But the main focus through free agency is now replacing Mike Daniels, who is a tremendous impact player for us. But just his age... Makes him uh, no longer that usable on the team because he's just going to keep going down and down and down. To, he'll probably be like an 86 by the end of the season, which we just want to have better than that. I know Jamarquise Washington is not an 86, and neither is Haha Clinton Dix. But um, they're younger, so they can continue to go up. They haven't reached their ceiling, and they're not going down. They're still going up. We need big seasons from them. And I almost 
am wondering whether I should move back to a 4-3. Play Jamarquise Washington at defensive tackle 2. Move McIntyre down to right end. Demarcus Lawrence down to left end. Play Blake Martinez at middle linebacker. CJ Mosley at right outside linebacker. And then pick up a coverage outside linebacker in free agency. That could be really, really nice. We're going to see what's available. We have a ton of XP. If we can find a really good middle linebacker, that could be the move. And this Everett guy, rookie. Not a rookie, but like drafted player. Jarrell Everett out of Mount Union. Superstar dev left guard. He looks unbelievable. We could definitely get him on the team. Miles Jack could work over uh, over Mike Daniels. Did you see Mike Daniels here? I miss you. I miss you already, but 31. I just can't do it. You, you're not very good anymore. You're the highest thing making you uh, an 89 overall is play rec and awareness. You don't have the block shed. You don't have the tackle or the finesse move. You don't have the speed. You just can't You can't do it anymore. You can't. Drew Brees is 41. No one to hang up the cleats, guy. We're gonna we're gonna make Miles Jack an offer. We're gonna make Miles Jack an offer. So we have signed Miles Jack. I will be transitioning back to a 3-4. <laughs> this is ridiculous. But that means Jamarquise Washington's overall is gonna skyrocket. I can pretty much guarantee you that. It's gonna be like I wanna say 86, 87 overall. Something in that neighborhood, I would guess. I'm not positive, but I would guess. As he goes up to an 87 with confidence. So 86. And we're going to move everyone to their rightful positions. And they'll get this team sorted out. We do have a second round pick. There's no real point in taking anyone. I think I'm going to use this time to improve on the offensive line. I totally forgot about that left guard. I did want to sign him and forgot. I would have played him at tackle more than likely. But we do need a tackle. So if I could trade Jason Spriggs perhaps to a worthwhile team. Uh, I don't know who the Colts would have. Let's see if the Chiefs drafted anybody. What about Duvernay Tardif? Move him over. Zach Fulton's here. I don't really want him. All right, let me look. Let me look. Just remember, it really doesn't matter. I can just trade the second round pick and even a third if I wanted to for whatever offensive lineman I want. So let's assume that that guard just got um, signed by a team and we'll go out and we'll trade for him. Provided my pick hasn't passed, which, I mean, there's definitely potential for that. What was his name? There he is. Jarrell Everett. Give me that... All right, well, Brown's got themselves a player, but I'm taking them. Two, a three, and a four. Boom. That's it for the draft. See you in the next season. I'm also trading a two and a three for Brandon Linder from the Jaguars, as Corey Lindsley is just not anything special. Right now, he's an 80 overall, and this offensive line is now unbelievable, which I think is, is better in the long run. I do want Smoke and Jay. I'll see if he's in free agency. He would be a fantastic backup to have. Uh, for pure charisma. Where is Smoke and Jay? Uh -huh. And Eli? There's one. And there's two. And... That's all we need to sign. With this trade, I'm trading HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix, a one, and Jason Spriggs for Malik Hooker. He will be playing free safety. Jamal Adams goes back to strong safety. And somewhat ironically, the top two safeties taken in their draft class are now on the same team. I clicked on the wrong fella. All right, this is the team. It is looking very, very good. We could use a fourth receiver, but based on the trades that we've made, this is just a fantastic team overall. So I am excited for the future, and the future is one season. It's not that long. It's gonna be like a couple minutes for you guys. But we're gonna see like to the midseason mark, see how this team is doing. I would really like to be undefeated. I don't see that as a likelihood, but it's there's potential for it, and I would like that. So we are 6-1 and one on the season. Jabal Adams is a free agent. I'm not going to waste my time re-signing anyone as this is the final season. We have a decent amount of XP, which I will save for the end of the season. And um, actually, I do have some coach XP, so we might as well get some more XP for some of our position players. It's going to be uh, tight end. We don't really need... I never signed a kicker or punter. And the trade deadline has passed, so I can't trade for one. Running back, we're fine. Uh, tight end, I, we don't really need it. But we're going to go tight end anyway. All right, see you guys at the playoffs. All right, we obviously made the playoffs. And boom, 15-1. and one. Nearly a perfect season. If we did not lose that game uh, in the first half of the season, we would have done it. Who beat us? Preseason didn't go that well. Regular season, lost to the Texans by a touchdown. That is unfortunate. 
But, uh, you know, pretty close games, I guess, for the majority of the season. But 15-1. and one. Very good team, as we'll check out the stats. Another great season for Aaron Rodgers as he's turned it around. 5,129 yards, 51 touchdowns, only 16 interceptions, which is one per game. But I guess when you're throwing 51 touchdowns, that is an only number. Rushing, Ezekiel Elliott, almost 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns. 13 touchdowns for Aaron Jones, who also coughed up the ball once. You, you. All right. 1,000 yards receiving, over 1,100 yards for Devonta Adams, Travis Landry, and Ty Montgomery, who all had double-digit touchdowns. Eight touchdowns for Eric Ebron as well. Blocking, offensive line played very, very well. Defensively, Blake Martinez led our team in tackles with 136. Tackles for loss, 18 from Kenny Clark. Quarter, quarterback sacks, 15.5 for Demarcus Lawrence, 11.5 for Leandre McIntyre, 9.5 for Jamarquise Washington. Interceptions, we have three from Blake Martinez, Tredavious White, two from Franklin Cockerham. That guy just gives him a cock. Some of my best material yet. He also had a touchdown. Um, and we were third in offensive yards as Le'Veon Bell of the 15-1 Steelers wins MVP. Aaron Rodgers at number two. That's crazy. This Nedney fella. 79 overall for the Chargers at number five. Yeah, simulation's totally correct. Aaron Rodgers wins NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Defensively, Blake Martinez wins Defensive Player of the Year. There we go. CJ Mosley at eight. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Keon Lyons. Okay. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year, Douglas McCullers. No Packers, because we didn't really draft anyone. Uh, we did. I think the CPU drafted a few fellas. But we do have some XP to spend. I don't even know why I'm going into Coach XP. We can't really do anything with it. Uh, kicker and puncher, there you go. You guys can still be shitty. This is the team for the playoff run. This is a Super Bowl caliber team, obviously. We've taken like some of the pieces that we developed over the course of, of this video, this rebuild, and uh, traded them for better players. So, I mean, they should be, all be really good. <laughs> we, of course, we have drafted some of these guys. You can see the overalls. Um, but it is a quality, quality team. Should be able to make the Super Bowl... And I would like to face the 15-1 Steelers in that Super Bowl as we have to go through the 9-6-1 Redskins in order to get to the Conference Championship. And here we are. Um, not really going to bother with XP. Won't matter. But the Eagles, the 10-6 Eagles coming into Lambeau in the Conference Championship. Winner will experience a Super Bowl berth. And we fucking lost. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, apparently, it's really easy for teams to walk into Lambeau and beat the Packers. Apparently, that's a really easy thing to do. Because it's happened twice now. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. We will get back to this when we revisit the rebuild. Um, that series is coming back. Yeah, just said it. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. This shit don't run